Good morning to all of you here. Good morning. And good night for those who are on the other side. <laughs> so this uh, lecture has been completely, I should say, organized and written by all of us. I'm so happy that we could uh, meet all of you. And uh, the purpose of this lecture is to say that uh, all over the world people are saying, in India we have so much diversity, but we have to realize that finally everything boils down to essentially the same uh, humanity is one. Anyway, here, uh, this lecture is on all use of Indian culture. And uh, what I have written here is uh, the Brahmi script, which was there earlier, due, during Ashokan time. Ashokan Brahmi was there, in which a lot of uh, proclamations of Ashoka were written all over India, like right, from Afghanistan to Andhra Pradesh. And uh, this is this particular is actually Tamil Brahmi, which is a subset of Ashokan Brahmi. And uh, so, as uh, Pandit Bihari used to say, India is an example of unity and diversity. It's a home for four major religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism. Several languages, not even how many languages are there. Every time you look at a different language, different food habits, dress patterns, and so on. In fact, even today, you can say there are two major patterns. Uh, I read it in a newspaper article. That uh, in North India, for example, Food is uh, mainly based on wheat, wheat products. Then, whereas South and East is rice based. And this goes all the way to Japan, right? Whether it is uh, South India, East India, or uh, Malaysia, or you know, all over the place it's rice based food. Whereas, uh, starting from, let's say, the northern part of India, all the way up to US, mainly, mainly wheat based food. Dressing also, they say that uh, parted dress, you no know, pants or pajamas kind of a thing. Whereas here it's a round one. The South Indian and the Loki or the Lungi, Sarong, all the way up to Kimono. So you have that round. So they say there is some kind of East West division going to India. So that's one way of looking at it. And uh, if you see the Indian population, by and large people agree now that two major populations are mixed. Today nobody wants to say they were Aryan, Dravidian, etc. They want to say A and I and ASI. Ancient North Indian, ancient South Indian is a term that people use. Just not to be a racial color and so on. And apart from that, some inputs from the Middle East. And a uh, lot of people used to come to India actually. Even it's, it is said that uh, the, one of the main apostles uh, of uh, disciples of uh, Jesus Christ, Thomas, came to India in 1852. So apparently he landed uh, near Kochi, And then uh, he established Christianity in India. So like that, many people have come. So, over you know, thousands of years, the trade uh, with India, in both East as well as West, was so strong that many, many people came. In fact, many people from the uh, Greek, Greece and uh, Rome came and settled down. They were known as Yamana, Yamanas. So, they were actually even, uh, uh, in fact, many of them were in the, for operating some of the catapults uh, and things like that were used also. And uh, so, apart from uh, two major populations, inputs from Middle East, East Asia, as well as uh, local regular populations of Brazil and so Indian, uh, you can say, population is made up of inputs from all of these, but mainly they say two major populations are mixed. Uh, in fact, if you look at uh, originally, about 5,060 years ago, the, this conference was not there, mainly it was the ASI. And then later on, more and more people came. So there was no invasion. I mean, invasion definitely was not there. But uh, it was migration. Why did that migration take place? The reason was that uh, around 3000 BC, they say that severe drought and uh, the uh, climate was bad. So people who were pastoral people who were handling cattle, etc., they couldn't find Rasta, started moving more and more, and went in many directions. And uh, from Central Asia towards Europe, towards Iran, towards India, and so on. So they had a common language and uh, Indo-European common ancestor. And uh, so because of which you find that Sanskrit or Persian or uh, you know, Latin, Greek or German, French, English, many common people. So they have common roots. So I'll be talking about that very briefly. And apart from that, we also had the Indian uh, population itself, and uh, which uh, people tend to think is the ASI. We'll come to that later. In fact, uh, it is well established knowledge that human beings descend from apes. There is no doubt about that. 
and uh, the species Homo sapiens, which represents human beings, evolved around 3 lakh years. The earliest samples that they have got is about 3 lakh years. In fact, for a long time it was thought about between 2 to 2 and a half, then they found another uh, thing for 3, 3 lakh years. So that seems to be approximately the age. See, like this is not a very long time. The age of uh, Earth is a billion of years. And uh, life itself is there for billions of years. But human being as a species, only about three like years. Three like years is not a long time. If you start counting, 30 years you go one generation. So three like years correspond to 10,000 generations. So it's not big enough. Right? Your grandfather, grandfather will go. In a short time, you will reach the early period of uh, human evolution. All races are the white, black, brown, yellow. Everybody has listened to the same stock. So this there is a theory for out of Africa. So the Homo sapiens, they say, evolved mainly in the grasslands of Africa, where uh, grasslands were filled with water also. And just in order to, you know, it, it, it started, stand, started standing right. Because if you were uh, using four legs, you know, you cannot uh, cross the water. So uh, for food purposes and so on, Standing erect became the thing and two hands became free. And that uh, really helped the human being develop in a different way as compared to the apes and so on. So having two hands, you could make tools and a uh, lot of other things developed. So making tools definitely, definitely was an uh, important advancement in uh, evolution. And uh, coming to the, the Indo-European uh, background, so they say that uh, in this uh, region, uh, between the Caspian and the Black Sea, well, this, this was probably the original homeland, from which again because of they were pastoral people, so tending cows and things like that. And uh, started, because of uh, changes in climate, started moving in different directions. So one group came down south. So Sanskrit is in fact related to this uh, southern group. And also Greek, Latin, Sanskrit, and Old Persian. Avastan language are very close to that. In fact, the old uh, Persian language, Avastan, is very, very close, closer than Tamil and Malayalam. Right? So, in fact, the Rig Veda, Rig Vedic Sanskrit, and the language in this Avastan, Avastan is the, uh, Zend is the book of the Persian. So, the, that was uh, written by Zorastra, Zaratushra, the Persian Sanskrit. So, that language, language of the Zend Avastan and Rig is very close, very, very close, almost like a dialect. So, which means that people will say it came from the same thing. But interestingly, the gender uh, rasta and the, the philosophy of the rasta was opposed to the Hindu gods. All right. So they say Indra, Varuna, Mitra, and all demons don't. Uh, so it goes like So basically, one tribe split into two. One of the earliest legends in our Hindu mythology is a fight between the Asuras and the Devas. So the Samudra Pantan is one of the earliest legends. So people say that that legend really represents the fight between the Indian Aryans and the Iranian Aryans. By the way, the word Iran itself comes from Aryan, it's called Aryani. And uh, even today many people have a last name Irani, Smriti Irani, etc. So it's uh, another form of Aryan. In, uh, in many Indian languages, the word Aya comes from Aryan, which means sir. It doesn't mean the race or anything, it means sir. So Aya, we say in Tamil also, that is uh, So people started moving in different directions. And the southern group, part of it came into India, the, and then part of it was in the Iran and so on. Interestingly, uh, there is a, a kind of treaty written in BC 1330. Right? It was a fight between somewhere in, fact, in this region, between Syria and uh, in that region. So there was a group, uh, in fact, a group was known as in Mitanni. So they had a fight with uh, their neighboring country, Kurites. In that fight, finally, they concluded with uh, some kind of uh, an agreement. The agreement is written in the name of uh, Surya, uh, and all the Mitra, Varuna, Agni, etc. By this, those are being concluded peace. So people feel this. So what it means is that the same people move to different places. And uh, so the movement of the satellite tribes in India was not uh, any kind of invasion. It was more driven by climate, not the availability of uh, grass, etc. So the invasion theory is gone more than a migration theory. And to see what kind of connections are there, many words you will see, comparison between Sanskrit and other languages. The word generation, generate, gene, comes from jan. Sanskrit jan is the same thing. Actually, and uh, so many words, in the uh, German essence is 
așa nu cum să fie prins aici. Și pe care de singur Serge, să vă rog, dacă vă lasă, singur, să vă să vă rog, dacă rămâne în ei. Să așa ne rog, să So, like a very word, very good flower means we can't go back as with the elements we see through. So, Bhagai Bhoga, the sound far will become high, exactly. Fear will become high. So, like that. See, you have to remember that these languages are separated by 5,000 years and 5,000 kilometers. Large separation of distance and time. So, many things will be created, Karta, Daughter, Dhritri. Brother Prata, Mother Mahu. If we party, we say you know, Father and Church, it's a Church is Pitra in Sanskrit. So many, many words, they come from Diva. Uh, Divya also comes from that. Okay? Divya Pratanam is comes from Divya. Diva means to, to give uh, light. Um, so our Father Maharaj is Mega, Maha is Mega, Greek Mega. So like that, mouse is Mu. Uh, Lufthansa, Hans, actually Luft is there, Hansa is uh, Bakshi. So, Hansa is uh, So like that, many, many words you will find, even something like a very little mega, like that. Um, <coughs> in fact, Shyama, uh, Shyama, that is the deep black color. Sinai comes from that. Sinai has a color, dark blue color, so it's called Sinai. So, the color Shyama is the same. Shweta is white. Shwetlena. Even today we are going to like Shwetlena. Shwetlena is Shweta is white. Okay. So like that, the word Andro. Andro means man. Andro means also means leader. And Sanskrit means Hindra. So Narendra is the leader of man. Today we have same. Right. So Narendra, Brigandra, like that. So Hindra means man. Andrew, English word Andrew, name Andrew comes from that. Uh, even uh, there was Greek with a black one too. Andrew is this name. So, like that, many word, Sudhara is uh, Sahodara from the same, the same. So, brother. So, Hridaya is uh, heart. Capita is capital, captain, etc. We say that comes from Kapata. Kapata is uh, head. You know, head. So, Nava is new. So like that, many things are. In fact, many of the words that we know, even scientific words, can directly translate from Sanskrit. Protozova, which is really complicated. Puratana Jiva is considered. Proto means Puratana, old. Jiva is the one which is Zova, Zova like the Jiva. So like that, if you start looking at it, you will find many, many forms. Phosphorus, something which means shining light. Ha means it's in basket, the word for uh, uh, sun is basket. One who makes that uh, uh, shine. So, like that, many words are uh, common. And, uh, uh, by the way, even something like uh, cation, anion in uh, chemistry, that means down. That goes down is cation, anion is that goes up. Ayana is the word that means to move. Ramayana comes from that only. Dakshinayana, Uttarayana. Movement of sun towards Asia, to the south, to the north, and the Ramayana movement of Rama. So, Ayana is the same word as Ayana. Right? Same, same group. So, like this, many, many common words are there. In fact, when British came to India, I was really surprised by the kind of similarity between Latin, Greek, and Sanskrit, and so on. So, they took up very deep Sanskrit studies. Max Muller, in fact, the German political critic, very closely, and they have done a lot of this. So that is how the study has been done with the In fact, they have looked at uh, some kind of standard shapes and so on, something called GK, uh, PF, DD. That is, whatever comes as uh, G in the uh, normal language will be K. Gnos, or Jnana, Sanskrit Jnana is knowledge. You know, diagnostic, agnostic, prognostic. Gnos, that uh, means to know. So, English has K in order of view. The K was initially pronounced. Then finally it's lost, it's a pronunciation. So, Gnos, Gnos, GK ship. Like that, lot of Hine is a lady, Gainapalaji, Kani. So like that, there are a lot of such, if you start looking at it, many, many, many things are common. Numbers are common. Dua is two. 
three, etc. By the way, the months we have September, October, November, December, Saptari is Saptari is Ashtai is in October, Navai is in November, Dasai is in December. Of course, there were ten months. Originally, the two months got added. One by July season, we can July, another one by August season, we can August season. So, like this, if you start looking, you will find many common areas. And uh, even Shatam Sentam are Shatam is word for 100, Sentam is 100. So, like that, the Indian Indo European languages are a group of languages. So, Sanskrit belongs to that family. And uh, so, it's in the southern group of languages. So, what it means is that people were together and they started moving in different direction. There was no invasion, but it was a migration driven by climate. Any research which is older? Any research which is older language? That is difficult. There was a common ancestor. I think those kind of questions sometimes, you know, this is a uh, level of priority for the region. <laughs> like, which is superior, which is not superior, which is yeah, just to know yeah. the origin. Difficult. In fact, exact location is also not known, but they are saying this from Central India to the different areas. And the people who move, there is also a genetic marker. Right? So in India now they have started doing genetic research. See, otherwise, many things are based on legend, based on you know, all kinds of hearsay. Then you can say anything. You can say, Tommy is the oldest one, we have been across the people who have been the one, Tommy is the one. So, such things are no more. Okay. Because human beings, as I said, on earth, they will have about two to three languages, not one. Not, not. So, sometimes to uh, support your own thing, you know, your language is not a so the Sanskrit uh, language itself is very different. The structure is different. It follows the general European uh, structure. The most Indo-European languages have a structure that there is a tabu and there is a prefix. You take a, a like term like pen. The word pen means to hang. Right? Pen, pendulum, pendant. Like pendulum, no, no, no. Pendant is basically a necklace kind of thing. And uh, you can make many words with that. Append, suspend, impend, impending danger is something as if something is hanging about to fall. So impending means that. Okay. Suspend, you know, suspension, we are using even our technical things. So say to handle. So, so words like that have come from a single dhatu pen to reach to hand. To that you can add standard spray fixes and you can make many uh, word. Sanskrit has a very similar kind of structure. So, for example, uh, Uttara. Sanskrit means water. Samudra is all water together. So, the sum means come together. Gama is uh, the word for come. Gama and gama are same. Sangama is coming together, meeting. Sangama. Okay. So, Adama. So, like that, you can make many words out of one. Okay. So, um, Yeah, Sanskrit uh, peri meter, Greek word, peri means to go around. Sanskrit also peri, peri means the same thing, peri word, peri krama, you know, go around, etc. So, Sanskrit is very close to Greek language, many things are very close. So, uh, <coughs> for example, you know, the Greek language, hydrogen comes from hydrogen. Hydrogen is water, I believe. Sanskrit, Udara means water. So Uttara Jana is what is happening, producing water, that produces the thing that produces water. So many times you will be able to see that directly you can translate from Greek to Sanskrit, etc. They are very close language. And they have a structure of a dhatu and a prefix. So Parikrama, etc. Upa, they have prefixes and then there is a dhatu and there is a... So Krama is basically to do, that is a dhatu. So Parikrama means go wrong. In temples, they go wrong as well. But as a Tamil, on the other hand, doesn't have that kind of uh, structure. They have uh, uh, this dhatu prefix kind of a thing is not there. Uh, so in that sense, it's a different group of languages. So uh, I will take a little liberty to go into the subject also. Uh, the Dravidian languages in general, the Tamil in particular, is a very uh, is a sound based sort of uh, For example, things like uh, when you say white, but you can see very strong 
பிள்ளைகளின் பச்சை பசை வேலை வெட்டி இல்லாமல் ஆட்டம் பாட்டம் பிள்ளைக்குட்டி இல்லை கரடு முரடு கண் மண்ணு
So the legend is that we, with 18 major changes, they threw balance the earth also, right? And uh, so that movement of Arasia down south, they say, is a shifting of the air cycle to the south, right? So they have existed here. And uh, in fact, many of the, for example, Murugan or Karthik, is generally thought to be like a South Indian god. But the, those names of existed there also. Kanishka, this uh, this thing on the other side has Skanda, the portrait of Skanda. So names as Skanda, Skanda Gupta, Kumara Gupta, etc. have existed. So what it means is the worship of Skanda was there. And uh, yeah. So uh, we come to the three Aryan migrations, what was there. The Indus Valley civilization existed in this region. The entire Pakistan, parts of uh, uh, India, the Punjab and Haryana and all that, Rajasthan, Gujarat, even a little bit of Maharashtra, and we are into Afghanistan also part of it, and part of India. Yeah. So, in fact, they say that it was a very, very large civilization, occupying more than a million square kilometers. And at that time, other coexisting cultures are Egyptian, Iranian, <coughs> and uh, Chinese and so on. But apparently this was bigger than all, all of them together. Right? A very big civilization existed. And uh, industrial civilization. The Sumerians used to call it by the name Miluha. And uh, people say that the word Miluha, again in a form of custom, uh, Tamil, uh, corrupt, uh, male yeah. Ahab. Because the, in industry, most of the, all the cities, the cities were all built on the race platform, not on the ground. Because the race which is flooded by the way. Industry was known to flood very, very often. And uh, even recently, three, four, five years ago, Pakistan was completely flooded. Right? So several lakhs of acres were flooded. So because of this flooding pattern, they used to build their cities on a race platform, made the harbor. Uh, Tamil always had this kind of aham pura, this kind of uh, concept which is there quite a bit. Aham means inside and pura means outside. Okay. So not only in a philosophical sense, but even otherwise. And uh, we find the last, uh, the Kur coming to Kaan Kur, Naan Kur, this Kur, the Kur that they perform pura. Pura means basically sounds. So they had the concept of a central race, uh, race platform, an internal city was there. And uh, outside of that, artisans used to, especially things like metallurgists and so on, a lot of smoke will get generated. Those are the There is another Quran saying. So the, the, the cleaner ones are the things. So that was the Aham. So male Aham was apparently the way they used to refer themselves to. And uh, interestingly, Sanskrit has got Blecha. Blecha means uh, they are uh, they, some kind of things. So Miluka, they say, they were known by the name Miluka in uh, Sumeri. So the Milukas had made a lot of trade with them. And uh, they used to do all kinds of jewelries and uh, many kinds of and, uh, teak wood, things like which are not available in Sumeria. So uh, in fact, some of them even settled down in uh, Sumeria itself. And then there was a colony in Sumeria. So this, uh, this is the city of uh, Mohanjadaro. You can see that most of the walls are done straight. And the kind of urban development that was there at that time, they say for centuries and later also they could not achieve that level of urban development. Of course, it didn't happen all in a sudden. Around 8000 BC, it started as a village life. And then with uh, Sindh and his tributaries giving so much of water, so they had a lot of time and then uh, many other things developed. And this is actually a docking a yard uh, in a place called Lotha in Gujarat. And uh, they could actually uh, like two suburban river ships will come inside and it will dock inside the support. And the water management was fantastic in the culture. They had a uh, hegeli kind of practices taking bath every day, there was a daily room and uh, things toilet and so on. In Russian toilet was in some places. So the management of that water through closed uh, uh, type of uh, things, <coughs> channels. So, uh, this just shows how the ships will go in, inside from the river into the dock and then plug it and put it and so on. These are some of the gems that uh, they have actually made. Uh, near uh, I.T. Roper, there is a museum. So whenever I go to Roper, I go to the museum. Beautiful, these kind of gems are there. Very good. They have made 5,000, 6,000 years ago, but even today, their value is very good. These kind of pots and so on. They kind of come 
good for that, they never made it up to the right? So, the industrial civilization was an urban civilization. Its uh, peak was between 3000 BC to 1900 BC. And what happened at 1900 BC? Originally, it was thought that the Mortimer Wheeler, who was one of the earliest ones in the 1920s to uh, really dig up these things, he thought that, uh, because in Rigveda there is a mention that uh, the, as they went with the chief Indra, they attacked the folks of the Dasas and then they succeeded over there. So he thought that Dasa refers to the indigenous people and uh, Indra is the chief of the Aryan tribe coming for the fight. But that was not the case. Actually, there was no fight anywhere. There was no, uh, in fact, at the time of decline of uh, Mohanjada Road Dharapa, they say that what about diseases are there? The same problem of climate is playing a role. Okay? Here also, the real, the, uh, in fact, there is a river in between. The river is being suggested. Sarasat river was there between the uh, Indus and the Ganges. And that was mightier than Sindh itself. And uh, the Rigveda talks great, uh, great thing about uh, Sarasat. Not so much about Sindh or Ganges, but about Sarasat. So Sarasat is a very mighty river. And uh, apparently, due to some kind of uh, uh, earthquake, Thing. So one part of uh, Saraswati River joined with the uh, sea, and another part called Yamuna joined with the uh, Originally, the Saraswati River was made up of uh, uh, Sutlej and Yamuna together. Sutlej is referred to as Shutudri, Shutudri and uh, Yamuna. Shutudri joined with uh, the, uh, the Indus, and uh, Yamuna joined with it. Yamuna was going to the way to the now different place, joining uh, Ganges. And there is a belief that under the Sangam in Praya, they say that Saraswati is going under the river. It is just a memory of the river having been there and it is being lost. Really, there is no such current, but it is. So, uh, that was one reason that the river getting dry up and uh, so water not being there and waterborne diseases also in the and so on. So, they say that was one of the main reasons for the decline of this. And uh, in fact, we still don't know anything about the language, but uh, mostly they are using signs. And what is believed is that each sign represented a kind of syllable. And uh, so putting together those syllables, you can put it together. Some of the uh, signs which are there, and by the way, the industry was on the right level, not on the left. Okay? So this is seven, seven pounds are there, seven plus fish. So you me. Yadu is coming in seven. So Yadu means represents the seven stars. The, uh, and it is called uh, Usami. Yeah. Subtraction, my God. Subtraction. So it is shown by the symbol seven uh, strokes and fish. Fish in Tamil is me. Me represents fish also, actually, star also. The word me, mean, mean means actually star. So these are some of the things uh, done by the Swedish uh, scientist Asper Patwala, he has given the interpretation. Similarly, six uh, strokes and me, are me, that represents Kartik. Uh, so, in fact, uh, Murugai is also six uh, stars, etc. So, are me, are me, and uh, for place. And uh, this is an interesting one. This is, should be read as Vata Me. This is actually the concept of the whole uh, sky in the universe was like this. They thought that all the stars and everything is all tied by some kind of invisible rope. When uh, uh, in kind of the beach and all the people you see this uh, merry go round. So in the merry go round there is a central axis and then there are ropes and ropes uh, are connecting many, so there will be some or something like that. So the whole thing will be. Their concept of sky was they thought that all the Stars and everything, planets are all connected by ropes. And uh, by the about the axis, this is rotating. And what is at the top of the axis? There is a pole star, Dhruva, which doesn't move at all. Right? In fact, Dhruva represented some kind of steadfastness, being, you know, absolutely under the concept and pulled out of the Dhruva story is like that. So, uh, that uh, what is on top of that? So this button represents rope. Then what are we call for pulling the uh, car? Right? So button is actually rope. Button also represents knot, by the way. So this would be as button. Right? Button. So uh, button and me. 
So that happens with the North Star and the Coast Star. So like that, they have interpreted some of the signs of the Indus Valley in terms of the economy. In fact, they have not been able to really do much, but few things here and there have been done. One uh, person the name Ayurveda Mahade, the IAS of India, but a uh, real expert on this Indus Valley script, as well as Brahmi script and so on, very recently in the past days. And he has also done a lot of uh, arrangement of this kind of things. So, and in fact, they have identified in that script uh, in things, some things, endings. They have found some common endings, something like an arrow, all right, an ending. It is thought that that arrow type of ending is probably female thing. Jagannamba, Amba, Amba. Right. So, uh, they have. Similarly, the male endings, similarly Sundararajan, Nagarajan, that An. Uh, in Tamil, Ya and A, like Ya and A. So it goes like that. So An and also the term Ya. Ya means a vessel. Ya and Ya and Ya and Ya So An and Ya and So the male ending has the shape of a jar. The shape of a jar is supposed to be male ending. The shape of the uh, arrow is supposed to be female. So like that, something here and there they are found. But how did they find that they went from right to left? Fortunately, the same written thing, in two different things they saw. In one case, what happened, the scribe was going to like this, didn't have any space, then went to the next to like it was starting from right to So they could see that it was actually written from right to Some of the things in this car, now we come from <laughs> north to the south. This is a place called Adichanalu, near the Kutupuri district. Some of their signs, Interestingly, very similar to what is found in industry. Industry actually, in some of the, uh, uh, the humped bull is a very common uh, The humped bull. So, this uh, bull is found in Adichanabur. Uh, they are pottery in the place of similar type. And uh, they were burying their people in split their jars. Some of the writing, this is the Burmese kind of writing. So, uh, some of the, the, the leftovers of the Indus Valley civilization, some of them are found here. Some southern, few of them here and there. This is the Chikan Borunda, which is near Parani Hills. And again, there are jars. Some of these uh, kind of uh, Beads and so on. Bead making was a big uh, industry. Place called Kodumana, uh, near uh, they were making beads, a lot of beads. So, in Kodumana, near Kodumana, the ties and things like that, some of the beads. So, uh, yeah, this is actually the famous Pasupati seal of industry. So, uh, it is all the animals. Uh, in fact, the uh, elephant, the rhinoceros, the bison, etc., even the goat, uh, tiger, and so on. So, all kinds of animals around us. And uh, in the middle, there is a person who is sitting in yogi pose. And uh, who is this person? Is the question. So, it's almost, you know, it is listed as a lot of animals. A lot of animals. Who is a lot of animals? First of Shiva. Shiva is a lot of animals. So, in fact, in the industry, they found, uh, see, this is the humble bull. And what is written here? Okay. Uh, this is the yarn. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so So, this Vasupati seal is interpreted as a primitive form of Shiva. And uh, in Indus Valley itself, um, stones being used for, like linga type of stone. So there is sufficient as seem to believe that it was a fertility cult based uh, religion. And fertility cult based religion survives in India even today. The Shakti cult, Shiva cult are fertility based. Right? Fertility means you have to look in a broader sense, not only of human procreation, but even the land and everything being so. The 
So she wants to be the person that kind of appropriate the element. That is one of the aspects of the idea. So, in fact, they say that uh, the centralization trying to can be India. They are worshipping Indra, Vanna, Mitra, etc., the elements of nature. And uh, mostly, in fact, uh, the chances because many of them are well, about uh, Mitra, about the uh, same so. But Shiva, Vishnu, etc., are of the local They have been there earlier also. In this study, you find Shiva and Shakti worship in the form of uh, cultural kind of worship is there. And uh, Guruga is also there. So, some such kind of. Uh, so, the common gods of uh, the Hindu uh, who are being gods and goddesses, they say uh, probably come from the indigenous population. Uh, this debate was going on for a long time. In fact, in recent times, politically, it has also taken a political color. And uh, people have resisted saying that nobody came from outside, everybody is from here. If anything, people will get outside. So, that was the kind of uh, state. But uh, that is getting this group more and more. Just uh, uh, two years back, this is one of the, the skeletons they found in a place called Raki Gadi. Raki Gadi is near Haryana actually, in Haryana. And uh, uh, so normally the skeletons which are they get from this thing will be so corrupted by many things. A lot of you know, uh, rain and the sort of affected. This was a well protected as a grave. They were able to get many skeletons. This is one uh, thing. interesting thing you can see, a lot of these pots, etc. They built an artwork that uh, just like the Egyptians, in India also they built an artwork, like whatever you do, karma, you will follow you to the next birth and so on. So the idea of past the birth and uh, you know, provision for their life, etc., they were also put along with them. And uh, so uh, they have taken the DNA of these people from the inner ear. Portion is well protected. And then that has been analyzed by scientists from different countries. The, actually, the Deccan University in Pune, Rasan uh, Shinde is the professor in charge of these. And after the last year, the year that they have been analyzing it, they find that the so called R1A1 gene, which is said to be, loosely said to be the RED for the magnetic gene. That is absolutely okay. okay. So, uh, it's basically the so called other ASI is there. But if you ask the ratio, these people also have the same thing only. It's just that they're separated by the two companies. And uh, color white is the same as today, brown color. Okay. So, uh, which means that well, India has got, see, you, you can't separate who you do, where the country is, etc. It didn't exist at all. So people have been moving from uh, place to place. And uh, so there has been, a, uh, let's say, migration from. Uh, yeah, and uh, so it looks like the industrial civilization itself, right? it was pretty big. So it was more like uh, some of the tribal religions of uh, uh, there. And by the way, in the entire, although it was an urban civilization, you couldn't find structures in temples. You couldn't find structures in temples. No temples were there. But you could see people worshipping tree, etc. And certain habits that are there even today, people wearing this skillet and you know, men, women wearing this uh, monkey symbol, those were there. Then uh, in places of worship, worship having this uh, you know, uh, offer and then uh, this thing, line, uh, coating, those kind of practices have been there. So many, many things that, and uh, in fact, uh, loosely I think that uh, Indian population is made up of two major populations, we say. One can take from cold climate. So they for them taking bath is difficult. Maybe once a month they will take bath. But Agni, fire is something which is very important. The many fire cases which was that we have are all from that. Even the dead, dead body to fire, etc. So fire cases. Whereas there's another group which is having a lot of water. So water uh, purification based on water. That is what the uh, uh, they say. Because they are living in a place which has a lot of water. So when you go to temple, it's ritual purification. Not only just bodily purification, but ritual purification. When you go to temple, you wash your feet and go to temple. So you believe that if you wash your body, your soul also gets... Uh, and uh, also, uh, you put the dead body in Ganges, all the sins go away, washing away the same. So those kind of ritual purification with water has come from that. Interestingly, uh, Avaya, who is a Tamil poet, who said, Anayim Vidakmuk Mundanidhi. 
So what it and then you Pidal there is Sanskrit. There are so many words in Tamil. No, Apanthara Pantan. So why did she use the word Pidal? To indicate that Tamil and Sanskrit are things that you have to learn first. So Anai represents Tamil, Pita represents uh, Sanskrit. So Anayu Pidalu Mundari you have to learn both of them to have a good person. So that was the way people thought in those days. They didn't think of it as prayer. So our lineages, one from the fire uh, worshiping, another one from the water, both are there. And uh, mantras are also cited, and we also have you know, uh, Shiva, Vishnu, this kind of thing. It has come from the other place. Indra, you don't know. So Agastya. One I thought I mentioned one here. Agastya has contributed to the idea. Agastya, in fact, is thought of as the uh, prime figure who actually formulated Tamil, Tamil grammar, etc. And uh, that is how, in fact, in Tamil legend itself, it is a given one who formulated the grammar. Interestingly, Tamil grammar closely follows the Sanjay grammar as well, even in the letters and many other things. So, so, there is some other influence, although it was probably a spoken language. But formally bringing the uh, grammar, interestingly, the word for lakshana, is of lakshana. Uh, that itself is, you know, so there is a lot of uh, interaction in this one. So what is believed is that, like I said, moved from the north to the south at the time of uh, marriage of uh, Shiva and And uh, in his, uh, the things that he has written, one of the main things that he talks about is that may both communities know refreshment and food and life. So he has contributed uh, some almost one set of things. If every time it ends with let both communities live in peace, both communities, not all, both communities. <laughs> right. And interestingly, he has used the word Ubhaya Varna. Right. Today Varna means color. But originally Varna meant actual community. So he says something like, let both communities live in peace, let both communities live, uh, uh, have as much food as they want. So almost like a compromising between, of course not, there was no big fight, but competition would have been there, I'm sure. Okay. Because when uh, resources were uh, less and more and more people kept coming. So he talks about uh, conflicts between two armies led by people who speak in that, people who speak in models. Right. And then he returns in the conflict, and then he every time this uh, poem in uh, like that, talk about the work of it is doing this. His wife also has contributed to the Veda. His wife's name is Lokamuna. Uh, while uh, Agastya talks about the ascetic life and then following spiritual pursuit, Lokamuna talks about no, no, physical life also. You have to take care of your family, your laser family, or perhaps this uh, Grahasya this thing you have to do. She talks about that. That are even today acceptable. Many of us in professional we so engrossed, we think that's family. So the wife has talked about local health, talked about uh, the uh, household and life and so So Agastya, the legend is that Agastya came from North to South. That represents a southern movement of a group of people. This is uh, what is taken from Purana. So Purana is the Sangha point. Where it says, this is about uh, the story of uh, a poet, a new poet named Pari. So he was uh, not Tamil poet named Kapila. And his uh, friend, Pari, was one of the patterns. There were seven patterns in the old uh, Sangha. So Pari is one of them. And uh, the story is that he was so famous that the uh, three uh, kings, the uh, Shehra Chodra Pandya, they got very jealous of him. They couldn't fight him and he gets killed. And he has two daughters by name, Sangavai, Sangavai, Sangavai. And uh, once the, the father is dead, this uh, poet takes uh, and then goes to the king after king and tells them, please marry them. They are the daughters of Pari. So when he says that, he talks about himself, first introduces himself, and then he talks about that king. Uh, and the king to whom he goes, they name Irungo Ve. So Ve is the one that is, it's a kind of small one. So what is it? So Padimani Yani Parami Poma, Niduma Pari Magade, Yani Sandi Tora. I am the friend of the father. He was in my life. These are my daughters. And that is the problem. I am a Brahmin. I am a wife. So, Tadala is a problem. He said, B.A. Vadapa, Muliman, Tadala is a problem. Agassi is supposed to have been born in a jar. Tadala means actually basically a big girl. So, Vadapa, Muliman, Tadala is a problem. 
செம்பு துணை ஏற்றிய செல்வமான் சிவசேனன் குடிசை வரை 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 வரக்கா ஸோ பீப்புள்
chair with them. Uh, so like that, he talks about uh, in detail about all of these places, what is available where and so on. In detail. So uh, this is a uh, from Aganam about the uh, port of Musiri. Interestingly, he says, Trillium, Periyachi, Vidurai, Kalanga, Yavara, Kalanga, Vinayimaan, Nankala, Onnodu, Kalanga, Kaliyodu, Kaliyodu. So Yavara is a word for Roman streets. So Yavara is a Vinayimaan, is technically superior. Vinayimaan, Nankala, Kalanga represents ship. Nala Kalanga, Nala ship. So the good, technically uh, sound ships of the Yavara streets. Onnodu, Kalanga, Kaliyodu, comes with uh, gold and goes to carry, especially that uh, song that uh, represents uh, black. Right? That is today, curry, uh, you know, this curry is not curry, etc. They say curry is with uh, spices. That comes from the word curry, which represents uh, black pepper. So black pepper was uh, what is value in uh, gold. So the Sangam time, uh, South South India, did have a lot of uh, Gold in the hotel. That is what invited the people from uh, the Turks came and then later on the Europeans came. For that gold. Even today in the temple, the amount of gold is just unimagined. One temple in the Turan, one of the one in Kalara, and then two lakh crore rupees for jewels. So that was a level of uh, trade there and uh, kind of. So this just talks about different ports and so on. So the items of trade, pepper, ginger, rice, in fact many of these, names even, are taken from uh, Tamil or some Indian language. But ginger, the word such as Sringara Pera, and uh, Tamil Inji, Malayalam Inji. So ginger is the direct word. Rice is like the same. The Greek word is Horaisa, but it's the same. So you will find that many things, sandals and chandana, so many uh, such names. Uh, in fact, uh, name them Margarita. Margarita is a giant. Margarita. That's called Margarita. So, like that, many items of trade were known by the Sanskrit or the name. Uh, and many things are born like that. Even interestingly, some names like uh, in uh, the Hebrew language, Kapi is uh, monkey. Uh, I mean, also Kapi is monkey. Uh, Tohai. Tamil is a big of to give the word to give. So like this, where is the city where many things are born like So uh, that again shows that there was so much of interaction. Uh, this uh, in Sangha period, what was uh, many, by the way, during Sangha period, the whole of South India was uh, mostly Jain and uh, Buddhist monks. And, uh, although the local, this thing also, the Sangam talks about uh, you know, uh, different lands, different uh, kind of gods and gods of worship. In uh, hilly land it was Muruga, and uh, in forest river land it was uh, Vishnu, or Mahal, Krishna, basically. And then in uh, uh, agricultural land, as probably Shiva, like that. In uh, uh, coastal land it was actually Kali. So, like that. It talks about different kinds of gods and goddesses in different places. And, uh, but then there were a lot of Jain monks who were there and they were spreading big things. A lot of Sangha literature actually refers to the Jain monks. And uh, they were the one who introduced the Brahmi script to say, This is actually in a place uh, near uh, Dharmapuri. So it talks about Atiyaman, Nadiman, and the Eta Pali. Pali is a place for sleeping for the Jain monks. Place at Tricha Pali. Pali is actually a place to sleep. And the Jains were also teaching people Sanskrit uh, writing and reading. So the word for school also became Pali. Pali Kodam, we say. So that has come from uh, his teaching. So, like this, in many places you can see the monks who have written. In the place of Mangra, near Madurai, this says Dhamma Mita Vedantariya Salakam. He has written it. Uh, interestingly, this uh, letter. Ja, ja, which is there in Malayalam also. It has come from the Greek fight. What is the fight? So, 
by that time they had a lot of uh, interaction with the things. So that is another thing. So the writing was basically in Brahmi script. Language is done, but it was written in Brahmi script. And many things like this is Tirupura. This is written in Brahmi. This is Agatha Buddha, Editha, Adi Lagatha Buddha, Chayula. This is Spectra Dana Raja Kandango, or Atra Pura. Like that. You have written in this Brahmi. The present day Brahmi script play came later, much later. It's called Palau Brahmi. So, Brahmi inscriptions are seen in many, many places. Some of those Brahmi inscriptions are found in Egypt. Some have been found in places like uh, uh, Oman, so in some portraits and so on. They have found this. Uh, so it appears that initially, the Indians were going to Greece and so on. In fact, there is even some evidence of an Indian trader going there and offering something to a Greek god, saying that let my journey be very safe. <laughs> So like that, uh, they have offered things that's almost like our Indian world. So, but later on, this trade was replaced by the Arabs in which it took place, it took over. And they started handling the entire trade. So the Indians went directly to the And uh, those, uh, some of the Arabs who came down to Kerala, settled down in the coastal area of Kerala, today called Mahapra Muslims. Sanila, they became a Sanila American. So, but originally, these people used to go there. So, Places like Dharanayake. Many places they have found Brahmi inscriptions, the language being translated. But later on, it looks like uh, once the, in fact, uh, the, the trade route itself was blocked after about fourth century AD, it reduced the trade because in between these people started doing this. So, wars and all that. So, the sea route got blocked and only much later. Columbus was trying to find road by some. They forgot about the road completely. Uh, in fact, uh, the Greeks used to follow the monsoon. And the name of the monsoon itself was uh, given by the name of the uh, sailor who found it. So, the, what we call as Southwest Monsoon, they used to call as Hippalus. Hippalus, the name of the sailor, Hippalus. Right. So, it seems uh, they will start sometime in uh, March in Alexandria, in Greece, in uh, Egypt. Go uh, into the Nile River. From there, uh, go along the Nile and then come to the Red Sea. From the Red Sea to the uh, west part of uh, India. So they could come. And uh, not using any of uh, this thing, uh, they will uh, use the Red Sea. Uh, the same. 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 So, roughly about six weeks, they will reach Six weeks. <laughs> and similarly, going back to the Western uh, So, they, this trade was going on from back somewhere. And uh, every year, more than 200 ships will come, loaded with gold, go back to spice. So spice trade was a very, very strong trade. But once the between land was taken over, etc., they could not proceed from that. The Arabs took over the trade, actually. And they used to uh, hike up the price and give all kinds of uh, things. Saying that, uh, it's, uh, for example, uh, cinnamon. The story was that it is oil only in one island, which is guarded by a huge uh, some bird and then to go there, the world will kill you, all kinds of uh, nonsense like that. Alright, so prices are that. And uh, then in the later period, he, he, the trade with uh, the eastern side took the further back. It was not only trade, even culturally, a lot of things were there. So even today, if you go to a place like Bangkok, for example, yeah, this is a Bodhi Dharma who went to China and then uh, they were spreading Buddhism and so on. So, like then, many Buddhist monks started going to the east. And uh, this is just showing uh, in a shrine in a kind of uh, uh, <coughs> in a state organ. And uh, the name of the shrine is Eravan Shrine. Eravan. But in Eray, Tamil Eray. It's got a name. And uh, they have shown the Brahma. In uh, the back of the room, you will see Brahma. Why Brahma? The four red so you can see in all four directions. So, uh, overseeing everything. <laughs> so something like that. And uh, this is a thing that in Bangkok is like a Samudra Mandala. On one side uh, the Devas and other stuff. This is Deva and other stuff. So the culture has gone there quite a bit. Um, I also, I just, this is actually what I have taken from Charapati Gara. Um, this first one I just wanted to mention a little bit. Actually, even the 
the lords and goddesses, what are they in Sangha period and what is it today? It's very different. If you take, for example, the uh, Kartik, Burga, who is uh, basically uh, from South Indian God, the today's interesting is that Burga uh, represents youth, Kumara, uh, youthful energy. He represents also knowledge. So, some of the Jnana is also a name given to him. And so, uh, person of uh, youth, person of the But the original concept during the Sankar period was like a free spirit. Right. A, a free spirit. Okay. Spirit of nature. Okay. Especially women, young women, uh, who are uh, married with age. Sometimes they get affected by certain type of uh, diseases, minor diseases. So it was said that then the Pujari will come and do a kind of uh, puja. And then uh, during his uh, uh, trance state, he said, oh, do this and then this. So that was the concept of uh, this thing. That's what he says. Vailabha, in fact, the word Vailabha represents the Pujari, not the top. Vailabha is the name of the Pujari. Vailabha was the very young member of the Nilam Paraya Vail, the very young member of the Nilam Paraya Vail, the Peacock. And Peacock, he is a Messiah. All of us are the Lord of the Mahaparaya Vail, the Lord of the Mahaparaya Vail. So, so the Sadhguru talks about uh, how you know, the Pujari will come and do this dance and dance, dance and do the music about the Pujari and then things will be like that. So, like that, what tribal kind of uh, there. Yeah. And many of that, most of that has now evolved into, uh, so even for example, if you look at Kali, it's a tribal one is new, uh, but uh, then you say how much he put the Today, instead of doing Bali, they will take top of it and take the So many things have taken place. Even uh, in uh, some of the rituals, like uh, this Radha, we perform by the sister, both can be But today, they say, in place of being a Hindu or not, like that. So, it's serious. There is even a thing we say that uh, Masha will come in place of me and the like that, such kind of you can watch that TV. Oh, yeah, this is the, this is uh, I am from the country through uh, Dora Devi Anadha. So she talks about all the uh, uh, the receipt for marriage, what are the things that are done. So in uh, South Indian Tamil marriage, all these things are done. Thorana Nanda, Manamendra Nanda, you have to decide a date for marriage. Mandra Kodi with the special type of marriage uh, address. Yes. Kapu Nana, Kapu is something that they like. And so on. I mean, the, uh, like that, all the rituals she talks about. And today, those are actually many times they do. Almost every single thing. This is about 1200 years back, he has talked about it. And all of them are done. Okay, this is the last slide. This is again taken from the Sangha period. This goes like Yadu Mure, Yadu Mure. Tidum Nandrum Iradarabada, Nodalum Nandrum Avachor and Nandrum, Sadalum Puduvadu Yadre, Vada, Inidana Mahindrum Vilane, Ulivu Inna Tindrum Vilane, Minnodu Vanam Tanjuri Thalai Yadu, Kalpuru Thalai Mallar Peri Yadu, Nirvai Padu Murei Pola Avai, Murei Vai Padu Nandrum Thiravo Vakim Thalaiza, Adil Maatshi Thirivari Vaitthu Vilane, Kari Siriwari Vaitthu Vilane. That is the meaning of this. What it says is that, all people are happy. Everybody, correct? So all the places are places, all people are our people. And uh, good and bad cricket is not because you know, somebody else, if our students say, uh, he has failed me. I don't know, he failed me, but that's what I have to say. Thank you. So, and uh, similarly, getting a disease or getting uh, cured from it is also not by somebody else doing You are through your own life, you getting that. So there is nothing to rave about in life, oh, you know, great, or to worry about it throughout life is no good. In fact, you can see it is somewhat like a drop of water from the heaven. It falls and then forms a big river. That river is driven all through the boulders, it's just uh, drinking down everything. In that kind of a mighty river, if you place a small boat, that boat will go with a stream. Our times are going like that, in where the cosmic laws, the laws of the cosmos, are driving our lives. So there's nothing to say, ah, that will happen, etc. So, in fact, he finishes saying, that those who have achieved great things, there is nothing to really live up to And even more, if somebody has not uh, done much, not very talented, don't look down upon the person and the person. 
Because many things that happen to us, we are lucky, it's part of nature. If you are good in mathematics, be happy that I have that time. If you know somebody is no good, don't look down upon the person and say it's good. So everything is part of nature, most of the things that happen, no. Be happy that you know you have got whatever you have got. And uh, thank you. Yeah.